Our society has vast areas of research to explore. Be it biology, history or astrophysics, there is a huge range of studies going on. Whether that is an isolated project or a multidisciplinary approach and regardless as to your field of interest, there is bound to be something revolutionary happening that you will find interesting right now. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be taking a look at three recent discoveries across a number of scientific and historical disciplines. Scientists have been modeling artificial intelligence on the wrong brain. The march towards creating functioning, entirely capable artificial intelligence is a long battle that the scientific community has been tackling for years. The want to emulate and mimic our own brains and machines has numerous clear beneficial purposes, and whether you believe AI development is for better or for worse, you cannot argue that the research and inventions are truly remarkable. So far, the bulk of AI research has been conducted by looking at deep learning. The physical process for this is making artificial neural networks to layer above one another. This creates what is often described as a web of nodes, the intersecting points in these neurons replicating what is seen in the brain. Together, this mimics the way neurons and the vertebrate in the brain interact and connect with one another. Conceptually speaking, Deep learning and machine learning allow the AI to learn and gain this information without the human moderation, input or teaching. While this is a promising start, it is fair to say a few details have not been figured out just yet. Biologists have arguably been at the forefront of AI research, helping study and understand the human brain before other specialists, largely physicists and engineers, can emulate these results in the machines. That is not to say that collaborative research effort throughout the scientific community has not had its fair share of bumps in the road. Simply put, we cannot and do not understand the entirety of the complex human brain. The brain is a complex organ, and while we can observe neural activity and map out what each lobe primarily does, it is the small, intricate details that leave us pondering. Think about all the things that we just do not know. How do we dream? How do our memories work? Even research into these fields is filled with speculation, overlapping ideas and disproved theories. And now these issues are creeping into the realm of artificial intelligence, with machines drawing conclusions their makers simply do not understand. In short, we cannot encode or design the innate common sense humans have. So, enter Billy. Billy is a giant Pacific octopus at the Seattle Aquarium. In 2005, she was given a medication bottle filled with herring to try and open. Following that, she and her eight-legged friends had their meals served in jars with fastened lids. It did not take long to learn how to open them, and soon enough, the whole group could open these jars and bottles in under a minute. Aiming to see how the octopus's brain could adapt and differentiate, scientists presented Billy with her food in a bottle with a childlock cap. This meant instead of twisting, she would have to push down and twist the lid at the same time. These caps are designed to be difficult for children to open, and it happens to the best of us, but it often takes a few goes for adults to crack open the tub of washing tablets. Yet, Billy figured out how to open it in just 55 minutes, and after that initial puzzle of precisely how to open it, was able to crack the case in under 5 minutes each time. Octopuses have something called distributed intelligence, meaning that two-thirds of the neurons are in their arms, not their brains. This means that they can perform more than one task simultaneously. In humans, this ability is limited, often referred to in psychological terms as dual task performance. We cannot perform two visual tasks at once, or two audio tasks at once, but one of each we can just about manage. Whilst the human brain may seem like the perfect blueprint for artificial intelligence, Octopuses, or rather any other intelligent species, also make promising candidates. The problem-solving, personalities, memories, and the manner and means by which they interact with their environment could make octopuses a great brain to model AI from. Rodney Brooks, a roboticist, perhaps most well-known for co-inventing the Roomba, believes that non-human intelligence is the key to cracking AI development. He offered this statement. It's unfair to claim that an elephant has no intelligence worth studying just because it does not play chess. 
A more surprising intellect worth studying doesn't come from an animal quite like an octopus, but rather the slime mold Physarum polycephalum. This is an organism with no brain and no neurons, yet it is capable of solving labyrinth mazes, calculating and taking risks, and remembering where it has been already. Some have even suggested it could be the secret to more efficient self-driving cars. We as humans have a long history of being inspired by other species. X-rays are modelled on the reflective eyesight of lobsters, the conquest to the skies and creation of airplanes is inspired by birds, and ultrasound canes for those with visual impairments is based on the echolocation used by bats. Perhaps this is the approach we should be taking to artificial intelligence too. A retired professor thinks he has found the location of King Arthur's Camelot. Back in 2016, a rather strange breakthrough was made, one that would take us into the past. A retired professor, Peter Field, is an Arthurian literature expert who used to teach at Bangor University in Wales. For this research of his, however, he has expanded into geography, as well as his usual historical and literary expertise. Field believes he has tracked down the legendary castle of Camelot. I am sure we have all heard of the King Arthur legends, and of course, tied to a king is his castle. Camelot is the castle where King Arthur held court over 1400 years ago. Though, as is the case with legends, we are unsure if he ever existed at all, never mind his castle. Nonetheless, let us presume that Camelot is indeed a real castle. Well, Professor Field believes he has pinpointed the site where it once stood. The site of an ancient Roman fort called Camaludinum in slack West Yorkshire, England. In 500 AD, the believed time of King Arthur, this would have been a logical site, as the king is believed by some to have been a military expert defending Britain rather than having genuine royal blood. Field described his discovery as quite by chance, going on to elaborate that he was simply looking at maps when the image began to make more sense. He commented, I believe I may have solved a 1400-year-old mystery. While his suggestions are yet to face scientific scrutiny under peer review, this is a promising hypothesis to say the least. Some evidence that could support Field's theory is that camelodinum as a word could have evolved, linguistically speaking, into the word camelot. As we use language over time, it adapts adjusts and becomes more efficient for speakers. It is entirely plausible Camelot is derived from the word Camelodinum. Slack might seem like an odd choice of location for a castle to protect against invaders, seemingly because placed in the middle of nowhere, though it could also make for an ideal spot to quickly disperse British troops to any coast or direction. To confirm this theory, we need some sort of archaeological proof. But how do you find proof of a man we are not sure even existed? Some have suggested that the King Arthur, with a round table and wizard pal Merlin, is actually an amalgamation of a number of British rulers, immortalised together in one big story. Others believe he exists but had his stories exaggerated, and others think he is an entertaining legend, but nothing more. Future research can only bring more answers though for now we will be left with a few more ideas to answer our questions in the future. Scientists discover unusual low-frequency radio waves in space. Scientists have studied fast radio bursts, or FRBs, for years, offering many solutions as to what may be causing them, from aliens to colliding black holes. Though recently, radio waves of a much lower frequency have been found, throwing a spanner in the works. Researchers from McGill University and members of Canada's CHIME FRB collaboration have found fast burst radio waves at just 110 MHz, compared to the previous all-time low of 300 MHz. This huge difference eliminates certain sources from the ongoing research and speculation, otherwise low-frequency emissions would simply be absorbed. Some have suggested such a low frequency means a source that is close to Earth. Another piece of the puzzle is an apparent three-day delay between the apparent emission and their detection by telescope. The leading theories suggest that these FRBs are similar to gamma-ray bursts, the universe's most powerful intense explosions. Another suggestion is that they are similar to radio pulsars. 
These are radio pulses that come from a spinning neutron star. Whilst there is still plenty to uncover on this topic, astrophysicist Bing Zhang says that the mechanisms of producing FRBs are greatly narrowed down. Perhaps in the not-too-distant future, we will have some definitive answers. Whether you are jumping into the technology of the future with artificial intelligence, launching into outer space, or journeying back to King Arthur, there are a huge range of studies and research developments to get lost in, with new discoveries being made each day over a huge range of subjects and topics. But what do you make of these three recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.